Welcome to For You Radio, where the gospel's for the believer and the unbeliever alike. If you happen to be breathing on God's green earth, the gospel is for you. Even if you're in a brown section, no matter where you are, the gospel's for you. I'm Craig Denofrio, pastor <laughs> of Redeemer Lutheran Church in Wilmer, Minnesota. I am Troy Near, pastor of St. Peter's Lutheran Church, Shaker Heights, O-H-I-O. Come worship with us. We'd love to have you at either or both of our churches, although that is one heck of a drive, I got to say. But So yeah. if you're just somewhere generically in the Midwest, is that what you're saying? Like, yeah, you you <laughs> should, because Troy, you and I are the only two pastors in the whole country that uh, are worthy of attending their churches. Uh, <laughs> Uh-oh, I just lost a whole bunch of pastors as listeners. There it goes. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we're also happy to be part of 1517.org's podcast and broadcast network. Go to 1517.org. There are all sorts of great resources for you, for your church, podcasts, video casts. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Talks with Dad Rod is one that's priceless. Uh, Rod, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, uh, the spiritual father to many of us, in a sense. Uh, go check that out. Classes with people like Dr. Adam Francisco and so many others, Chad Bird. Go check that out. 1517.org and visit the bookstore. That's the only thing that's not free are the books because you know, someone's got to pay for printing and shipping and all that stuff. So 1517.org is the place to go. Troy, anything yeah. new and exciting? Did I miss anything? Oh, yeah. The, uh, what? If you want to email us, Troy, if, if people wanted to email us, what address would they type into their email machine? Well, it's still the same. You'd still type in for you radio at 1517.org. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, shall we jump in? Is there anything that we've missed that we should have talked well, about? I, I don't think so. Well, we're in Colossians, right, still? Yes, sir. So we're still in Colossae uh, there? Colossians. Uh, not, with, uh, not with Paul because he's never been there. But right. uh, uh, where's he? He's in Rome probably, right? Probably. Probably under house arrest, probably in Rome. You you always uh, like to make a point that he's probably chained to another guy. I do. I like that. Which, yes. To really? a guard specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm just having a hard time with that, uh not believing that, but just the idea of being chained to someone twenty four seven. I'm not sure who's being tortured. You know, if this is Paul <laughs> who is suffering or the poor soldier or whatever that he's chained to. Uh this guy obviously had messed up in his military career to be chained to another human being, right? I heard a preacher talk about this once and say, basically, this is Paul's dream come true, right? <laughs> I have a captive audience. I'm going to talk to you about Jesus all day long. I swear, Paul, <laughs> if you mentioned that Jesus guy one more time, I'm going to chop off your arm and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, gosh. Uh, wow. That's just really... Uh, a disturbing thought. Okay, so anyway, Colossians, and we're in chapter three, picking up at the beginning of chapter three. Uh, yeah. Any other background you want to offer, or should we just dive in? Well, you know, chapter two was about your walk in Christ, uh, and uh, we kind of left that with the idea of that Christ alone is the foundation of our faith. Right. Uh, and now in chapter three, we're going to have this really kind of cool thing of you know, basically what you put off and what you put on. Right. right. So you, yeah. you put off the old and put on the new, right? So exactly. um, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, if okay. you would read, I would be I will appreciative read. because my eyeballs aren't working real great today. Okay. I hear your dogs in the background too, so I'll read. Very good. <laughs> Here we go. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Paul says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Uh, pause. Shall we pause there? Sure. Just real briefly. That's a natural okay. pause. Right. Yeah. Uh, because it's a paragraph, is that right? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that is just rich there, isn't it? You so, have been off, raised with Christ. That's mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hey, you yeah, were yeah. about to say so something. Th- I cut you off. Sorry. Well, no. Uh, you've been raised with Christ, and you're looking there where Christ is. Where is He? 
seated at the right hand of God the Father. Right. And you know, this is where we get the statement from, you know, in, in the creed, uh, Christ is, ascends to the right hand of the Father. Um, so in the right hand of the Father is essentially is that place of, uh, of honor, of uh, majesty, of glory, and also kind of of intercession for us. Uh, uh, even know, even can... on top of that, and not more, but uh, it's the right hand is the hand of fellowship, the hand of love, uh, the hand of help that reaches out to you, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, exactly. So, so when we shake hands, it's the right hand that we use. This is carried over into our traditions. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Cool, cool. cool. Yeah. So, um, so we're kind of there. Paul's advising us to, to look up, as it were. Yeah. And, and the reason why is just brilliant, verse 3. Well, because you're dead. See, mm-hmm. you died. None of this earthly stuff sticks to you anymore. It doesn't belong to you anymore. It doesn't fit anymore. Where is your life now? Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's this this whole thing, you know, it's, I, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, right? Yeah, you know, I just had a really weird thought, and uh, pre- prepare one? yourself for the rabbit trail here. The <laughs> okay. the movie, the nineteen eighties movie Trading Places, Eddie Murphy. Uh, oh boy! You know okay. he's he's kind of a beggar. He's he's kind of a little bit of a hood, and all of a sudden he's forced into this upper class white collar environment, and he changes. He he doesn't want to go back to where he came from, but rather he assimilates into this new life, and. Uh, he throws a big party and all of his old friends show up and worse, and they end up kind of trashing the house. And he's getting pretty upset with these people because they're, they're wrecking his nice, beautiful new place. Um, this is kind of what's happened here. We have put on the new, we are, we are now wearing the clothing of Christ, the better than Armani suits. And in baptism, we have been clothed <laughs> okay. with Christ. We'll see that in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry, no, not in this text. I'm sorry, I was thinking Galatians. Uh, but we are clothed with Christ. We now have a new way of operating. It's not the old way. We don't want to go back to slumming it like we did before. Now we are uh, in Christ and we have a heavenly home. Uh, not that we look down on those who are where we were, but rather we just simply have a new mode of operating and it is a heavenly mode so we can fix our eyes on jesus here take them off of ourselves fix them on jesus and i think this is the sort of thing that will carry us through this whole section understanding that we are now operating on a higher plane not a snooty higher plane but just a higher plane period well and 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 again the reason for that is because you're dead to the old stuff right yeah. Right, so it's it's not that you're just uh, oh you're holier now, uh, no that old sinful fleshly earthly stuff died, and now your life is completely hidden away with Christ. Yeah, and I I love that image by the way. Your life is just kind of tucked away inside of Jesus. Isn't that great? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hidden so, with Christ in God. I mean that's that's yeah. just you you are now am I? Yeah. yeah. So all those existential questions, who am I? What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing here? Uh, who are Jesus. you? Uh, you're hidden with Christ. Yeah, yeah it's all there. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, okay. But still, uh, as always is true with Paul and with all good theology, um, that earthly stuff kind of hovers and hangs around and start wants to mess stuff up. So what right. do we need to do? What do we need to do? Well, it, it, before we jump into this, yeah. Uh, you know, Paul talks about this in Romans 7, that this right. tension exists within us constantly. There's a war that wages within us. The new Christian wants to do the things of God, and yet the old Adam, the sinful self, keeps popping up and causing mm-hmm. trouble. And right. I think that's kind of where we need to look at as we segue into verse 5. Okay. And then, uh, again, now, what do you need to do to the old Adam, the old sinful flesh? Kill you it. You need to train... Exactly. Kill yeah. it. You you can't train him. <laughs> you can't rehabilitate him. He must die. And yep. therefore, verse 5, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. 
In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Right. Right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, go ahead for well, just, just that last thing is, is that no one is greater, no one is lesser in the kingdom of God. We're all equally sinful and equally forgiven and redeemed. Uh, it doesn't matter how smart you are, how much money you have, or anything else, what, what your family lineage is or anything like that. What matters is that Christ is all in all, and that's the only thing that matters. I, I like to think of heaven as a great locker room. You know, everyone's walking around in a towel. No one knows who's got the Mercedes or the Rolls Royce or the old rusted out Pinto in the parking lot. Everyone is equal. Yeah. That's, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a good analogy. I'm just stuck on the towel thing, but okay. I know. Right. People people get hung up on that a lot. <laughs> everyone gives me a funny look when I mention that. I don't know. Yeah. Why. I, I, yeah. I, I can see why. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, and what I want to add to that too is that... Um, not just we're all equal in the kingdom of God, but we're all equal. We're all on equal footing in the local church. Yeah. Now again, remind ourselves. Let's remind ourselves that Paul is writing to a specific church, and we should also remind ourselves that really, anytime you read the word "you" in the New Testament, uh, I, I guess let's limit that to probably to uh, all the epistles, not the Gospels necessarily, but any epistle we read, that word "you." is almost certainly going to be plural. Right. So yeah. he says, you, church, you whole church, put to death, therefore what is earthly in you. You, church, should not have sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetous idolatry. Uh, yeah. Uh, in these two, you, all of you, once walked when you all were living in them. So this is a, this is a church thing here where uh, I think Paul's going to talk about, hey, you know, how do we live lives together as church and this earthly stuff has no proper place there right None of we it. we call this stuff sin <laughs> right uh anger wrath malice slander obscene talk from your mouth you know, offensive willfully offensiveness right yeah we we call that sin we we don't want to offend god and we don't want to offend each other uh but instead we should be willing to hold each other up uh not hold each other up to a higher standard and say, you've really disappointed me, but hold each other up and say, this is the gift that God has for you is a better way, uh, a more contented way. Uh, and we are all the same. You know, Troy, in 25 years, almost 26 years of ministry now, I have had church council presidents who are everything from doctors to a homeless guy, or not homeless, but rather an uh, um, unemployed guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and they have all done a wonderful job in their own right. Um, you know, that's really amazing how we are all one in Christ and, and your station in life shouldn't have anything to say about it. So. Well, actually it doesn't have anything to say about it. Yeah, you're right. That, that's what Paul's saying. There's not Greek and Jew. There's not circumcised, and uncircumcised. None of that counts here. Yeah, but so, even uh, even in the assembly of fallen members of the church, it, mm -hmm. you know, we need to remind ourselves of this. Well, see, it, and I think that, that's my point. So, matter. if yeah. if uh, if in your church, dear listener, uh, if in your church there are people who are trying to make this argument that no, 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 I've been here longer than you have, no, 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 I'm more important here than you are, or even dare we say, if you are doing that to someone else, that's not appropriate. Right. That doesn't belong to your new life in Christ. That's the old stuff. That's that stuff that you are supposed to have died to. And now if it's coming back, you got to kill it off again. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So right. and now I'm especially intrigued though with verse eight. Okay. But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Um, it's that, that phrase there, obscene talk, uh, that kind of captures my attention. You're going to go for the hop, hox, legomena, aren't you? Oh, oh man. Big Greek word. Yep. I know. Okay, I, I win because I used it first. 
Okay. It, a hapaxlegomena is some uh, a word that is used only once in the Bible. It's not it's not found other places. Uh, yep. To have a real hapaxlegomena, when you look into Greek antiquity and you can't find the word there, boy, you got a humdinger on your hands. But uh, it it causes some some indigestion on translating things uh, because a lot of times we'll, we'll say, okay, so where else does this come up in the Bible? How is it used? And then we'll look at, okay, in antiquity and classic Greek and, and, you know, you look at Plato and all those guys and you say, how was it used there? And if you can't find it anywhere, uh, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of the translators. They've, they've chosen a word or phrase for a reason, but you might not really know what it is. How's that? That's really good. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's just not enough of a frame of reference for that particular phrase, that particular word, obscene talk, to fully determine what it is. Um, now, and I've known all manner of Christians. Uh, some uh, like some salty language. Mm -hmm. uh, others, uh, you'd you know, <laughs> you wouldn't hear a bad word in their mouth no matter what. Um, and I've known other Christians, too, who want to take this like phrase, obscene talk, and make a list. Well, here's the words you can't say. <laughs> so you turn I, into George Carlin. Oh, right? George, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the infamous seven dirty words, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, I don't think that's Paul's point here. Now, if you look at that whole list, anger, wrath, mouth, slander, obscene talk, um, that all belongs to this earthly way of living, which is dead now. So mm -hmm. I really think the the larger thing here uh, is simply this. Are you using your mouth, your language, to tear down or to build up? Mm. So I don't care what kind of meaning you want to load up in that, that phrase, obscene talk. Uh, if, in the end, you're not building up with your language, I don't think you're taking the intent of Paul's words here seriously. You know, even even in understanding, guys tend to trash talk each other, and a lot of times it's done in affection and with good humor, uh, and it's it's one of the ways that we bond. and And sometimes women don't get that, and they they look at guys in the way that we carry on, and they say, "Oh, well, see, this is what what Paul's talking about with your obscene talk." You know, um, <laughs> I think that context is going to carry a lot of this. You know, what is appropriate in what circumstance. Uh, St. Paul in the book of Philemon uses some salty language. Uh, I'm sorry, not Philemon, Philippians rather, uh, uses some salty language. And, <laughs> and the reason is, it started with a P. Uh, the reason is, or maybe one of the reasons is, that he's speaking to a community that is full of retired soldiers. And so soldiers are rough people, and they understand rough talk. And so Paul uses some rough talk in that book of Philippians. Uh, so part of this is knowing your audience, not being willfully uh, obscene, not being willfully offensive to people, and we should avoid that. Um, but once again, this is a one-off word, so you can read a lot into it. You can. Uh, but again, I think the whole thing is, uh, hey, what you say, uh, specifically, let's say, your mouth needs to be converted as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and, you know, what, what comes out of your mouth reflects what's in your heart. Well, and actually, Jesus talks about that, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. So if, yeah. You, if you hate your neighbor, you're going to probably have mean words for them, anger, wrath, malice, slander, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, if you love your neighbor and you say, oh, you know what, that, that person is sinful just like me and redeemed just like me, uh, maybe we'll be more likely to encourage them in the gospel. There you go. And uh, and once again, within the context of the local church, I invite you all now to think of that one particular member that just irritates you a little bit. Or pastor. <laughs> or pastor, right, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And here Paul says to you, no, that sort of thing doesn't belong here. Right. Yeah. We're all on a level playing field. Christ is all and Christ is in all. Right. Right. That means right. he's in each and every one of us. And he's also the very reason that we gather together. So with that... Um, move, on, move on to verse 12. Yeah. So put to death that old junky stuff, and now what are we going to do? Put that stuff off, and now we need to put something on, don't we? Yes. 
Yeah. So if you take off the old clothes that no longer fit, you need to put on some new clothes. That's ideal. Uh, yeah, typically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, put on then, uh, verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Be a Barnabas, right? Be oh, an uh, encourager. a son of encouragement? Yes. Barnabas, okay. Barnabas. Right. Uh, be one who is one who encourages others in the gospel. Yeah. Be one to proclaim the forgiveness of Christ to one another, right? Uh, uh, well, mutual consolation and conversation of the brethren goes a long way where we uh, console each other. You know, Christ died for that one too. Uh, have a have yeah. good heart. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, you're redeemed. You're forgiven. Yeah. Now, and again, I'm going to keep picking on this. Um, try to get your minds out of the, oh, this is just how a Christian behaves everywhere, and try to kind of narrow this down to Paul's context of talking of this is how we live as church together mm. mm-hmm. uh, you know and actually verse 16 gets right down to the actual worship service what do you think he's talking about when he says let the word of Christ dwell on you richly teaching and admonishing one another that's what happens in a church service singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that's what happens in a church service so he's getting right down to in the midst of the worship service this is how you live together yeah, um, I think that you made a good point earlier with the uh, plural of you in, a, in all of this, that, that oh, this use? is all y'all, right? Yeah. yeah. And or use, use guys. But it's also individual, you as part of that greater mm-hmm. you, right? So you individually amongst the yous of the rest. And so this is not just an instruction to do this when you're in church and be a good person when you're in church. But it's admonition to live like this, be like this. Yeah. Uh, and you, you can only do that when you're in Christ. <laughs> yeah. But pastor, that guy super irritates me. You know what? Paul says, bear with one another. Bear them up as a burden. If you have a complaint against someone, then you forgive, I love this, each other. So you, you're kind of acknowledging, all right, we both have a little hand in this process of this wedge being driven between us. Forgive right. one another. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and oh, here's a hard one. As the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. Oh, boy. one another. Yeah. yeah. Forgive us the forgive us our debts as we forgive those. <laughs> or forgive us our sins as we yes. forgive those who have sinned against us. Right. You know what? I, I, I never dare to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me in the same way that I forgive other people. I just I, no, I don't want that. I don't want right, that. but that's yeah, that's a prayer that we would be forgiving like Christ, not that we would be forgiven by Christ as much as we forgive others. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, so, we're we're going to be so in here, an eternal yeah. world of hurt. Here, uh, here, not only is Christ the example, but He's the one who gives forgiveness, and so then He is the one who gives the forgiveness that you then have to give to another. This is not coming from within you; it's coming from Christ. Uh, and what about the peace of Christ ruling in your hearts? That's not just a peaceful, easy feeling, right? That's a cessation of hostility. Mm. You know, I like uh, that. I like before, that. Before you were in Christ, God was at war with you. Right. And now he's not because Christ brought peace. Um, and so, yeah, uh, and... If that peace of Christ is ruling in us, and we're called in one body, then we're, you know, it's this whole thing where we're joined together, living together, living out this true Christian life, putting off the old self, putting on the new self. And it's all about what Christ gives. Yeah. Well, I think that this is really a wonderful place for us to to stop for today with uh, verse 17. Okay. And, and just kind of... It, Pick, pick on verse 16 for just a second, if I can. 
let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Uh, How do we know what to do unless we're instructed? How do we know what this looks like unless we are in the word of God, unless we read the word of God, Mm. hear the word of God, receive the word of God? Uh, And so the answer isn't try harder. The answer is receive more Jesus. Uh, Come to church. Receive Christ who is given for you. Receive him in the words proclaimed to you when you hear those words of forgiveness. Uh, Receive him in the Lord's Supper as he comes to you with grace and mercy. Uh, Receive him in every way possible. Gladly hear and learn the word of God, uh, the third commandment. And we're called to gather together, not in order to pay our obeisance, but in order to be given to that we might be strengthened, that we might be fed, and that we might be nourished in the gospel. Troy, 20 seconds left. Any thoughts? Uh, no, I think you covered it pretty much there. So I'm just going to let you run out the clock here. Okay? <laughs> well, stretch. Uh, let me tell you, <laughs> 1517.org, great place to go. Go check it out. If you haven't spent any time on their website, you really should, because there are tremendous opportunities there for you. Also, we need your gifts. Go in peace. For You Radio is a 1517.org production. To listen to this radio broadcast and podcasts and broadcasts like this one, I invite you to visit 1517.org. There you will also find many publications and free resources, including classes on Christian apologetics, church history, philosophy, and so much more. We are completely funded by generous donors like you. Would you consider making a generous gift to our work of spreading the gospel? Simply visit 1517.org.